it with the help of Chelsea and Christina, and we are going to take over the next hour, okay? So welcome to Facebook Live. Thanks to Be So In for allowing us to kind of take over um, and show you all about our Go products. So today, if you have questions, quilters, you can just type those in the comment section, and the lovely Christina will read those to me, or she will answer them if she already knows the answer. So that's kind of fun. Um, today we're going to talk about our go cutters, we're going to talk about our cube, I'm going to show you a couple of tips and tricks, and then I have a little trunk show for you at the end. So this is a great time for us at AccuQuilt to be sharing our information with you. Um, we're really excited to be here today. So first of all, my question to you is how are you doing? Everybody doing okay? I feel like we should ask that question a lot these days. Uh, Christina and I were talking about 31 days in quarantine we have been. Um, so a lot, you know, we've got that first month under our belt and we're just trying to really stay focused and um, practice social distancing. So let me just give you a quick update about AccuQuilt. So here in the Dream Studio, we are practicing um, social distancing. We're here in Omaha, Nebraska. So Christina and Chelsea are with me today. Behind me is the warehouse. They are also uh, filling orders for Be So In. They've created um, an event order, as it were, for this Facebook Live. So Be So In has tons of our AccuQuilt products. They're offering a great discount, 25% off, Christina, dyes and mats and cutters. They have drive up, um, they'll do curbside for you. Um, so if you have a question or if you want to place an order, give the shop a call, okay? Um, so let me just kind of give a brief introduction to myself and who I am. Um, I'm Pam Heller. I'm, um, Acu I'm an international educator for AccuQuilt. Travel all over the United States and Canada doing in-store events very similar to this. I love it. I love going new places and meeting quilters. We have such a great community as quilters, don't we? Um, so for me, it's just a really great opportunity to learn a whole bunch of things and to meet a whole bunch of quilters. So a friend of mine actually last night um, sent me a text and he said, how are you doing? How are you doing in quarantine? And my response was, I have never wanted a hotel room with a king size bed and room service more than I do now in day 31 of quarantine, okay? So we're doing all right. Okay, so um, I also do all of our Facebook Lives. So today I'm doing your Facebook Live. Tomorrow at 12 noon Central Time, I will be doing AccuQuilt's Facebook Live, and we're going to talk about face masks. So I know so many of you have just answered that call to create face masks, and, and we are so proud of our quilting community for doing that. So tomorrow, 12 noon central, we'll talk about our face masks. And um, we have a few new dyes that we created for that. All right, so today in the comment section, if you have questions, um, put them in the comment section. Here's my question for you. This was kind of our general um, question to the office today, since most of us, probably 95% of us are working remotely. The question was, if you could write a book about your time in quarantine, what would you call that book, okay? So Justin, who's our IT manager, and he, he does lots of things. Justin, um, he said, my life in sweatpants. And my answer was, uh, dirty hair don't care. So we'd love to hear what yours is. All right, let's talk about the Go products. Let's talk about um, how fast and how easy you can cut fabric. So um, about 20 years ago, um, I was new to quilting. And I learned, just like so many of you, the old method of rotary cutters or scissors and rulers. And um, for probably 10 years, as I first learned to quilt, I just found it so frustrating, the thought of having to cut fabric. Because it took so long, most of the time it wasn't very accurate, and I felt like my quilts weren't just that level of perfection that I wanted them to be. I also tried templates and rulers, different kinds of rulers which gave me a little bit more satisfaction, but really there was just kind of this struggle. So um, eight years ago, I started working for AccuQuilt. I've been a part of the team since eight years ago, almost nine in July. And with our Go system, you can cut 90% faster than with rotary cutters or scissors. Okay, so think about that, 90% faster. So what used to take you an hour to cut out you can cut out now in less than 10 minutes. 
every single time, it's going to be accurate. It's going to be safe and easy to use. You can cut up to six layers of good quilting cotton that you would find at your be so in, okay? Six layers of quilting cotton, but you can also cut flannel and felt, denim, wool, minky. You can even cut cork. I'm going to tell you to start with one or two of those more thicker layers of fabric, okay? But always six layers of quilting cotton. So I think about how often when we, I would cut with my rotary cutter, how maybe I could cut three layers at a time, right? So now I can double that and cut six. So let's talk about our Go Fabric cutter and we'll kind of talk about our different cutters and our cube system, okay? So this is our Go Fabric cutter, lightweight, portable, weighs about 15 pounds. This cutter is meant to go places with you. It's meant to go to your charity quilt um, guilds, maybe your guild meetings. Maybe you're gonna go quilt with your sister for the weekend, okay? Really lightweight, portable, you can take it anywhere. All right, when you open it up, it looks like this, you ready? Ta-da, that's it. That's all you have to do to open it. You don't need to adjust any plates. You don't need to do anything other than use it, okay? Inside, we have steel rollers. Some die cutting machines have plastic rollers. Ours have steel. Now watch this. You can turn the handle this way if you're right-handed, this way if you're left, so the rollers go both directions. We have a little bit of a, ru a little rubber grip here so you can grab it easily and turn the handle. That's it. This machine doesn't need any kind of servicing, okay? I would tell you on occasion that you just want to kind of come through here and take a little dust rag and get rid of the dust bunnies, okay? So this is it, this is the Go Fabric Cutter. Now this is really important, okay? When you set up your cutter, you want it to be waist high. This is where I film all of our videos, do all of our Facebook Live. So this table is set up for me, right? It's perfect, right here, waist high. You don't want it so low that as you're bending over, you're gonna find that you're turning the handle like this because then you're gonna hurt your shoulder and your back. And for those of you who are a little vertically challenged, okay, you don't want it so high that you're doing the same thing, okay? Make sure your cutter is waist high. Now, I was traveling a couple of years ago. I was in St. Louis and a quilter raised her hand and she said to me, Pam, that's wrong. I said, what's wrong? And she said, how do you have your cutter set up? That's wrong. I said, how do you have your cutter set up? She said, oh, let me tell you. She said, I have an eight foot table and over here I have all my fabric and it's pressed and ready to go. Right here I have my dies and my pattern. So already I kind of like her. Right here she has her go cutter. Right here she has her sewing machine. Back here she has her ironing board that she has lowered. And right here she has a six foot table for her finished blocks. She sits on a swivel chair. Okay, she's brilliant, okay? Think about your space quilters. If you can't stand for long periods of time, lower this cutter down and sit in a swivel chair, okay? Now, most importantly, under her eight-foot table, she has a little fridge with Diet Pepsi. So for sure, I could quilt with her, okay? So think about your space. Think about, do you need to put your cutter away every night? If so, look, you can fold it up like this. You can tuck it in a, in a corner. You could tuck it under a bed or in a closet, okay? All right, so this is our go cutter. So if you have any questions, be sure and type in the comments section and Christina will stop me, okay? All right, so let's talk about dies and mats, okay? In the AccuQuilt world, we have two terms. This is a die and this is a mat. This green thing right here that I rotary cut on that's a rotary cutting mat, okay? The dies have steel blades. So this two-tone foam right here shows you where the steel blades are. So watch this. I can press right here and feel those blades, but I can run my hand over and it's gonna be safe, okay? You wanna store your dies like books on a shelf, either this direction or this direction. You don't wanna stack them one on top of each other. The weight of the dies on top will damage the blades of the dies on bottom, okay? So stack your dies like books on a shelf. Thousands of cuts 
out of this, okay? Thousands. Hundreds of cuts out of your cutting mat. So what you want to do is you want to flip it and turn it and flip it and turn it and get all the good love that you can out of it. When it stops cutting cleanly, it's time to replace your mat. So be so in today, they have mats on sale. So if you're looking kind of at your mats and you're thinking, ooh, this is kind of grubby, um, today is a really great day to get them. Now, in the great state of Nebraska, we can recycle these mats. But I was in Texas and met a quilter who um, puts them in the bottom of her tote bags. Quilters are so smart. OK? All right, so let's talk about this die. OK, I don't work customer service at AccuQuilt for a hundred reasons, okay? But a couple of years ago, it was really busy, it was Christmas time, and the um, manager said, hey Pam, can you answer a customer service call? And in my quilting head, I thought, how hard could that be? So I answered the phone, I said, Christine is already laughing. I said, thank you for calling AccuQuilt, how can I help you? And this woman was so mad. She said, I got my go today. And I said, oh, congratulations. She said, my die is broken. I said, I am really sorry. Why do you think it's broken? And she said, it came like that. And I said, oh, I understand that, but why do you think your die is broken? She said, listen, are you going to give me a new die or not? I said, ma'am, do you have a smartphone? She said, of course I do. I said, great. I want you to take a picture of the front and a picture of the back because quilters Sometimes dyes like Toyota Priuses and lemonade makers are defective, okay? Sometimes when they're bending that steel rule, there might be a gap here. Or when they're pushing it together, there might be an indentation on the back. I'm going to tell you that the reason that you want to buy from Be So In, other than to support your local signature retailer, is because if you have a problem with your dye, you should take your dye and your mat, because 95% of the time it's the mat's fault. Take the die and the mat into the store. They have both of our cutters, okay? And they're gonna test it. And if indeed your die is broken, they are going to give you a new die and chocolate. It's true, okay? In my eight years at AccuQuilt, I've seen seven defective dies, okay? I have seen hundreds of thousands of dies, seven defective, okay? So she sent me a picture of the front looked like this, the back looked like this, and I said, ma'am, why do you think your die is broken? And she said, it's crooked. And I said, it's supposed to be. And she said, why? Let me tell you why. This is a steel blade. These are steel rollers. If this shape was straight on the die board, every single time that steel blade would hit those steel rollers, you'd get this jarring effect like you when you hit a speed bump, okay? But what happens if you take that speed bump one wheel at a time? Much smoother and easier, right? So they're on an angle for a reason. And then she hung up, so I feel like I answered her question, okay? So the most important thing to remember is when you're cutting with our dies, you want the label to be at your belly and the lengthwise grain of the fabric traveling back and forth across the die board. So watch this. Okay, you ready? Yep. Low and wonky. You ready? High and tight. High and tight is right. Okay. Can I, Chelsea, have the overhead? Thank you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that lengthwise grain and I'm going to just cover this shape. Okay, and I'm just gonna go back and forth a few times so that you can see it, okay? All right, perfect. All right, Miss Chelsea, so see, I've lined up the fabric over the shape, not, parallel, not with the die board. If you line it up on the die board, you're gonna waste fabric and you're gonna be crabby about that, okay? So I've only covered two of the shapes. Our dies will only cut where there is fabric and a mat. So watch this. Okay, you ready? Gonna put my cutting mat on top. Christina, do we have questions? Um, we've got some folks already asking about the electric cutter, so we're oh, excited in to a get minute. there. Just be patient. <laughs> All right. So is the cutter or is the dies come through the cutter static has built up? 
So if you lift up this cutting mat, all the pieces stick to it. So here's my tip. Give it a little love. Slide that mat, don't lift. And now look at this. Ta-da, ta-da. We have cut perfect squares and perfect half square triangles. And I fan folded them so that right sides would be together so you can see this. But look at this. With our half square triangles, what did we cut off? Yeah, the dog ears. So from this point here to this point here is a perfect quarter inch seam. You're welcome. So my tip for you is, if you're gonna sew those pieces together, the question is, can you cut them together? Okay, so if you're doing half square triangles or quarter square triangles, we have um, cut off those dog ears. Now, here's another important information, okay? Um, with your dies, we have built in that quarter inch seam allowance, okay? So if Christina asks me for a five inch square, I'm gonna say, ooh, do you need a five inch square or a five inch finished square? Okay, those are two different dies. Now keep in mind, we did not build in that quarter inch seam allowance for our applique shapes. So if you're a needle turner, I'm sorry, okay? Our applique shapes are meant to either do uh, free motion quilting on them or download the embroidery files, okay? All right, so any questions about our go? All right, we're gonna talk about our go big. You ready? So um, at AccuQuilt, about, I don't know, four years ago or so, um, we came out with our go big. Now hold on, just give me a second here. I have to make sure it's all plugged in the right way. It's a little janky here in the Dream Studio today. I don't know why that's there. Okay, so this is our Go Big Electric, all right? Um, just like the Go, it's meant to go places with you, okay? It's about 23 pounds, okay? But still portable. It has a little handle here at the top. You can take it with you as you go, okay? Now, when you open it up, watch this, you ready? We're gonna lay it down just like this, okay? We're gonna open it up, ready? Ta-da! That's how you open it up. All right, so let's talk about this cutter. All right, first of all, to turn it on, Christina, I messed up our mat here. Okay, to turn it on, you're gonna press the green button, you ready? Ta-da! That's it, that's all you have to do. Okay, this cutter is actually four inches wider than our Go cutter. So watch this. You could actually run two dies through in one pass. Look at that, okay? So if one die is 90% faster, two dies exponentially faster, right? Okay. So you have to remember that when you're going, putting dies through the cutter, each die has to have its own cutting mat. You can't share mats like this, okay? Because what's gonna happen is it goes through, it's gonna shimmy, and it's gonna move your fabric, and it's gonna be, make you crabby, okay? So all of our Go dies will fit in our Go Big Electric. We also have six dies built just for the Go Big. You ready? A 10 inch square, circles, churn dash, double wedding ring, snail's trail, wonky, no, a crazy quilt, and what's the last one? I said the square, we'll figure it out. I always remember it, churn dash, there we go. Those are the seven, we have seven, okay? So um, those dies will only fit here in your go big, okay? Just like the go, it can cut six layers of fabric in one pass if it's good quilting cotton, it can cut flannel, felt, denim wool, and so forth, okay? So let's talk about what goes with the Go Big, because right now these machines are on sale at Be Sew In, right? 25% off, is that what it is? Oh man, you should get one. So if you already have a Go and you're looking to upgrade, this is the day to do that, okay? Because this is the Go Big. Now, quilters ask me all the time, Pam, what cutter do you have? And I say, can I only have one? Because um, I actually do have two. I have the Go, I have the original Go, and I use it at home all the time. For example, if I need to cut strips, 
Okay, I just get my go out and do it. If I'm cutting a big project like I'm working on now, I'm gonna use my go big, okay? So they each have um, a great use with them. When I go to quilting retreats, I always take my go big, okay? Just because it's just easier to use, all right? Now the die that comes with your go big is this die. This is the flying geese die. Okay, how many of you have made flying geese without a die? Everybody raise your hand. Are people raising their hand? Yeah. Okay. Now listen, what's hard about that? Yeah, everything is hard about that, okay? Um, the points never come together. The sides never match. It's just a mess, okay? So um, I was in Indiana, and a quilter said to me, Pam, I've only ever made a goose. I'm like, no, 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 flying geese. They're like borders. You put them around a quilt. She goes, oh, no. I had a template, and I cut one out, and I sewed it together, and the point was off, and the side was off, and I threw it away. I've only ever made a goose, okay? Well, we have the flying geese die. So this is that quarter square triangle, half square triangle, right? And... We've cut off the dog ears for you, just like you um, would with those smaller dies. Look, we cut off the dog ears. So from this point here to this point here is a perfect quarter inch seam. Let me give you a little tip about uh, sewing together flying geese. You ready? You're gonna take one side and put them here on the right hand side. Sew from the top to the bottom and just chain piece, okay? Then press your piece away and then add the other piece chain piece, press away. Now you're gonna find that when you sew them together, there's gonna be a little gap here at the top. And in your quilting head, you're gonna say, oh, I sewed those wrong. No, that little gap is that quarter inch seam. So when you add it to the next row or to your quilt, you have perfect points every time. Okay, so let's cut some stuff with our Go Big. Um, with our Go, we have our Ready, Set, Go. It comes with our manual machine a two and a half inch strip die and an eight inch cube. But I'm gonna show you how to cut um, strips here on our Go Big, okay? So quilters, um, what do you think is our most popular die of all? Yeah, two and a half inch strip, why? What do you use that for? Borders, binding, sashing, you can make your own jelly rolls, right? Okay, so let me show you this die. Now, we have 14 different sizes of strip dies, not just two and a half. They start from one inch to six and a half inches, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to use strip die magic, and it applies to all of our strip dies except for one. We have one strip die that comes on a six by 24 die board, and it has a one, one and a half, and a two inch strip on it. Um, when I show you today how to cut um, squares and stuff, it does not apply to that die but all the others, it does, okay? So look at our strips. Okay, I'm gonna talk about this die. First of all, it only has four blades, you ready? One, two, three, four. There are no blades down here and no blades down here, okay? This is the exception, one of two, to the lengthwise grain rule, okay? Because when you cut strips, do you cut lengthwise grain? No, you cut two and a half, five, seven and a half width of fabric, right? The same applies here, okay? So I'm going to tell you that we have one section of two and a half, two and a half, and two and a half, so a total of three, which equals seven and a half inches. I'm going to tell you to add just a quarter of an inch on either side, and from your fabric, rough cut eight inches of fabric. Just rough cut it. Don't, it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Typically, I press mine, and I um, cut the salvage off today. I did not, but I'm going to show you how it works anyway. So what you want to do is you want to take the folded edge, okay? Because the salvage edge is always wonky, right? When they cut fabric at Viso In, do they start from the salvage edge? No, they start from the folded edge and cut your fabric. All right, can I have the overhead here, Miss Chelsea? I'm going to show these folks how to lay this fabric down. All right, here we go, you ready? So look, okay, the uh, fold is parallel to this black line. If you bring it all the way to the edge of the die board, it's gonna stop cutting here and here and here and here, and you're gonna have hula skirts. 
I feel like you don't want hula skirts. I feel like you want straps, okay? So I'm gonna move it back here. All right, Miss Chelsea. So this is how it looks on the die board. Now listen, you could put six layers of fabric and in one pass cut enough binding for a queen size quilt. One pass, okay? All right, so I'm gonna take my mat, I'm gonna put it on top. Now listen, quilters, it's really important that you have the appropriate size mat with your die. So for example, here, if I'm cutting both shapes on my flying geese, this is a six by 12 die board. You wanna make sure that it has a six by 12 mat. Now, if I was just cutting my um, three and a half inch half square triangles, I could just put a six inch mat there and save it, okay? All right, oh, I gotta make sure this is gonna go through here. We'll move those up real quick. All right, Christina, do we have any questions? You know, we just have folks saying where they're from. Um, there was a comment. Tammy said that the electric cutter is great for binding. Oh, always. Always, always. Because how hard is it to cut strips? The hardest, okay? I find that when I cut strips with a rotary cutter, I always have those um, elbows in the middle, right? Or mountains in the middle. Okay, we're going to give it a little love. Slide, don't lift. Now look at this, Coulter's. Two and a half on this end, two and a half on this end. <gasps> no mountains in the middle. Okay, the reason we don't have mountains is because that fold was parallel to that black line, okay? But wait, there's more. Let's say Chelsea needed to cut 500 two and a half inch squares. I don't know why, but she does, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your perfect strips and you're gonna come right here on the die where it says 90 degrees. Now the trick is you wanna make sure the fold of the fabric comes past the blades. So where my fingernails are, that's where the blades are, okay? So I'm gonna back and forth, go back and forth. How many layers can we do, quilters? Six, good job. Where's everybody from? We have so many comments. Some people are watching from Oklahoma City. Um, we've got folks all over, Muskogee, Prairie Grove, Arkansas. Prairie Grove, Arkansas, I know where that is, okay? <laughs> all right, so here we go. So now, watch this. You could take this um, strip and you could start here. You could go all the way down the die board and in one pass, cut 126 squares. You're welcome, okay? But wait, there's more. Let's say you wanted to cut diamonds. Okay, um, you have your choice. You can cut 60 degree diamonds, 45 degree diamonds, or 30 degree diamonds. Okay, so watch this. I'm gonna go back and forth. Okay, just like we did with the squares. Okay, and again, I could take my ruler and come all the way up the die board. Put on my cutting mat. You ready? Here we go. So tell you a funny story, um, my, I have a son Taylor who's um, a tattoo artist and he and I are making a skull quilt and that's the royal we. Like he helped me cut it and now I'm sewing it together. But we needed to cut 400, four and a half inch squares, right? Christina's shaking her head, she knew how to make it. So what we did was um, I had him in the dream studio and we were cutting strips and then we turned them at 90 degrees to make four and a half inch squares. And as it going through the cutter, he said to me, does this cutter not cut faster? I gave him a ruler and a rotary cutter. He apologized. Okay, we cut all of those in like an hour and a half. How long did it take you, Christina? Um, I think it, I split it up between a couple evenings, but yeah. I cut about 825, yeah. I think. And yeah, it... Christina made them smaller, so she had to make more. Yeah, so she did a great job. Okay, so look, here, look. Perfect squares, ta-da and perfect diamonds. Now listen, for those of you who've always wanted to make one of those um, tumbling block quilts, and you're thinking, I don't know how to make those, I'm gonna show you, okay? What you wanna do is you wanna cut your diamonds at 60 degrees, and then look at this. Now you've made your tumbling blocks. Ta-da, okay? So, strip dye magic, it's amazing. Now I have one more trick to show you with our strips and then we're gonna talk about our cubes, okay? So, how many of you um, miter your corners for binding, right? 
Raise your hand. Yep, I do. Now, I have to tell you, in the non-AccuQuilt world, you would have a tendency, you would take your two strip, your strip like this, right? And you would put right sides together. And then you would mark here, and then you would stitch, and then you would cut, and then you would trim. And it works perfectly every time. Okay? And when it doesn't work right, when it's off just a little bit like that, you take your seam ripper and pull it apart. You just fudge it. Okay? I'm going to show you how to cut perfect miter corners every time. Okay? So what you need to do is you need to take your strips, and it doesn't matter what size they are, okay? What matters is that you want to have your fabric facing up. Then you need a half square triangle bigger than your strip. Three and a half inch half square triangle, two and a half inch strip, okay? If you don't have the go big, though today you should get it, it's 25% off, okay? If you don't have the go big in this die, you can use shape number three in any cube. Okay, so watch this. I'm going to take my fabric and I'm going to line it up right here. Just a second, I'll show you. Okay. All right, so look how I lined that up right here. Now, a couple of things. You want to make sure that salvage edge goes past this little notch right here. Okay. Now, do you remember at the very beginning when I said it's only going to cut where there's fabric and a mat? If I put my mat on just like this, it's going to cut right here at the bottom. That's not what we want, OK? So what we're going to do is put the mat on, and we're going to just offset it a little bit so that blade is still exposed. OK, you ready? Then we're going to run it through the cutter. You can do six layers. I'm going to tell you, I kind of hold it till it comes through. OK, you ready? This is so cool, OK? So now what it's done is it's cut the 45 degrees, it's cut off the notch, and since we put right sides facing up, then it fits together perfectly like this. We've cut off the dog ears and you have a perfect quarter inch seam. You're welcome. Okay, it's my best trick. Okay, let me show you why it worked. Ah, okay. It worked because we didn't cover this blade came down here at 45 degrees, and it cut off that little notch, okay? So that's how you miter corners with binding, okay? Any questions? All right, you're a good group. I'm glad you're all over. Is it warm where you are? It, it, it snowed here on Easter Sunday. It was sad, okay? But it's better today, right? Going to be 50s? It's 34 degrees right now. Okay, so. it's 34 degrees. That's not warm at all. <laughs> okay, ready? I'm going to put my go big away. And I'm going to talk about our cubes, all right? And then I have a little trunk show and to show you what's new at AccuQuilt. I'm pretty excited about it. OK. See, more and more, it looks like your sewing room, doesn't it? I had to clean my sewing room before Easter, which meant I had to take the stuff that was in the dining room downstairs. It was very difficult, <laughs> OK? Oakley came upstairs, and she goes, Lola, where's the sewing machine? And I said, it's downstairs. She said, how are we supposed to sew? <laughs> I said, I don't know, oops. All right, here we go. So at AccuQuilt, um, we have over 280 dies. Did you know that? 280. So a few years ago at AccuQuilt, what happened was we had some, we realized that quilters owned our product, they owned some dyes, they had some patterns, they made some stuff. And then there was kind of this dilemma of, hmm, what do I choose next? Like, is there a pattern that I can follow? What can I do next, okay? So we created the cube, okay? So it comes in five sizes, a six inch cube, an eight inch cube, which is part of our ready, set, go which is our manual me machine strip die, comes with an eight inch cube, a nine inch cube, a 10 inch cube, and a 12 inch cube, okay? Those are the five sizes. Each cube contains eight geometric shapes. The shapes are the same in every cube, they're just different sizes, okay? Combined together, those eight dies make 72 mix and match patterns. These are free downloadable patterns, okay? So my favorite question to ask quilters, 
Um, and if we were all in the room together, you would laugh when I ask you this. Um, does anybody have a stash? Yeah. Okay. So let's do a little math here. If you, um, if you were to take your stash and stack it on top of each other, how many of you have a stash as tall as me? Yeah, raise your hand. How many of you have a stash as tall as our ceiling here? Yeah, you are the winners, okay? This is such a great stash busting tool because what happens with our stash? We go home and we pet it and we rearrange it and we add to it. And then after a while, it just becomes so overwhelming, okay? So get you a cube, get you a cutter and start busting up your stash. All right, when you open it up, it looks just like this. You ready? Ta-da. Okay, this is the storage container for your cube, and these are how we store our dyes. So <laughs> I was in um, Florida, and I went to pull out the cube to show everybody, you know, all the pieces in it, and I broke a fingernail, which is such a first world problem. Okay, I get it. But in my group, um, there was a woman, her name is Loretta, 93 years old, active quilter. She said, Pam, if you pull the skinny one first, you'll never break a nail. It's my tip of the day, okay? Pull the skinny one first. It makes the other ones come out so much easier. All right, let's look at our eight dies. So quilters, we have eight dies. Here we go. Each die is numbered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each pocket is numbered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's so you can put things back where they belong, okay? In the skinny one that you're always gonna pull first, there is a training DVD. Now we recognize that some of you don't even have DVD players anymore, right? So you can go to YouTube, which is where we have hundreds and hundreds of free videos, okay? Um, you can go to YouTube and put in AccuQuilt Go Cube, and that way you can um, watch the little video. It comes with a cutting mat and a pattern book, okay? So let's talk about the cube system and how it works. So the first thing you need to know is that the cube system is based on a four-patch system, okay? Each... Um, Shape number one in every square, every cube is a square. Four of these sewn together, in this case, makes one eight inch block, okay? Don't think, oh, I'm getting the eight inch cube, it's gonna make eight inch blocks. No, there's some sewing involved, okay? All right, Miss Chelsea, can I have our overhead for just one second? Oh, hey, I just got a note, cubes are also 25% off, look at that. All right, so here's one of the patterns. Okay, so you can see right here to make this particular block, all you need is shape number two, three, and five. Then it tells you how many of each shape to make, or, or how many of each shape you need, and the amount from your sacred stash to make one finished block, okay? The reason we show you only one finished block is because we don't know what you're making. Maybe you're making a wall hanging or a table runner or a mix and match quilt, okay? On the back, this is foreign to all quilters. These are called sewing instructions, okay? What is it about us, right? We look at stuff and we're like, I know what I need. I need some squares and half square triangles. I'll be fine. I met a quilter in Ohio. She owned every size cube, all five of them. And when I showed her that the back had pattern instructions, she said, I've never known that. Okay, she's used all of her cubes. Pattern instructions. This particular die is shape number two and it actually has blades in the center. So it cuts four pieces. So if your pattern says cut four two and a half inch squares, you only need one piece of fabric, okay? All right, shape number three in every cube is my all time favorite shape, half square triangles, okay? Two are on this particular die board. We've cut off the dog ears so that you can sew from here to here that perfect quarter inch seam. Shape number four in every single cube are quarter square triangles, okay? So think about that, quarter square triangles, how difficult those are to cut because you have to cut the square first and then you have to make the first cut right and the second cut right, okay? Just all in one die board. 
just like our half square triangles, we cut off those dog ears. All right? Then shape number five in every cube are smaller half square triangles. Now, a lot of people say to me, Pam, I'm never going to use that particular die. But I'm going to tell you, actually, you are. It's kind of our workhorse die, and I'll show you why. Shape number six in every cube is not just a square, but it's a square on point. To measure a square, you measure the sides and they are, they are equal. The same here with our square on point, okay? And if you wanted to make the shape square in a square, we did all the math for you. Because we meaning AccuQuilt, not me personally. I studied history in college, okay? So we've measured the hypotenuse. So the shape you need on the outside is this, this workhorse, those half square triangles. And then it makes a square in a square. Okay, shape number seven, because Chelsea woke up this morning and said, gosh, I hope there is a parallelogram in every cube, just for you, okay? Let me talk about this die, okay? What's hard about parallelograms? Everything, right? You have to cut a strip and a rectangle, and you have to cut off the 45 degrees, and the chances of you cutting it wrong, 100%, okay? But it's really important. This die is what we call a directional die, okay? So I'm here in Omaha, Nebraska. If I wanted all of my parallelograms to go east to Chicago and have lunch at Giordano's, I would stack all of my fabric facing up, okay? And they would all go to Chicago. But if I wanted half to go to Chicago and half to go to Denver and eat lunch at the Rodizio Grill, then I would fan fold my fabric back and forth. Half would go to Denver, half would go to Chicago, okay? I'm going to tell you that when you get new dies, boy, make a test block, especially with something like a parallelogram, so you know which direction it's going to go. And then if you're saying to me, gosh, I could make a, a, a rectangle with this parallelogram, the answer is, yep, you can. You just need shape number five to go right here on these long ends, and it makes a rectangle. Then shape number eight in every cube are rectangles. All right, so quilters, in your little quilting head, you're already thinking about some patterns that you might have, patterns at home that aren't made for AccuQuilt. I'm going to tell you, you want to go through those patterns and find those geometric shapes and write down what shape you need from the cubes. Um, it's just amazing how many patterns that you can convert, okay? So the cubes are on sale 25% off. Now, um, we decided at AccuQuilt, gosh, we should have... Um, if A dies were great, uh, we should make companion sets for them, okay? So we did. We have two companion sets, the companion set corners and the companion set angles, okay? Now, this is important. Unlike the cube, they only have four dies, not eight. But they have to match the size of the cube. They work together. They're not separate entities, okay? So if you have the 8-inch cube, you need the 8-inch companions, the 9-inch cube, the 9-inch companions, and so forth. Not like your friends in real life that are different sizes, okay? You have to have the same size, okay? All right, let's open these up and see. So if we have the original cube and the companion set corners, look, what are we going to pull first? Yep, the skinny one. Um, you can now make 144 mix and match patterns. So the first um, shape in the companion set corners is this shape, chisel. Chisels are super hard to make, right? But what's the shape we need to make a rectangle? That workhorse, shape number five. Chisels, also directional, just like those parallelograms. You want to eat lunch at the Rodizio Grill? They all stack up. Half to Chicago, half to Denver. You fan fold that fabric, okay? The next shape is what we call signature block. And this is a great die because it allows you to write a message, maybe for a graduation or a wedding or some kind of gift that you want to do. If you add these shape number five to the top and the bottom, it makes a square. The next two shapes, depending on the season, unless you live in Nebraska, um, make snowballs or bow ties, okay? I thought we were totally in bow tie weather. And then Sunday happened, and now we're in snowball weather still, okay? So it allows you to cut the snowballs in those tiny little half square triangles, okay? 
or you can turn them the opposite direction and make bow ties. So if you have the original cube in the companion set corners, you can now make 144 mix and match patterns. But wait, there's more. Let's say you wanted to have one more companion set. This is it, the companion set angles. So quilters ask me all the time, hey Pam, what's the difference between corners and angles? I'm gonna tell you that corners has like blocks and it's more chunky. Angles have more points and stars, okay? So let's open it up. Let's see, ta-da. What are you gonna pull first? A skinny one. Thank you, Loretta. Okay, here we go. Now, the first two shapes in the companion set angles makes these shapes, okay? It is, what kind of triangle is this? Christina, do you know? Isosceles, she wins a gold star today. Good job. Okay, so it's an isosceles triangle, and this is what we call half rectangles, and they fill right here to make the shape triangle in a square, okay? Now, this half rectangle, this is also a die that you want to pay special attention to because you want to fan fold your fabric back and forth across the die board. Otherwise, when you cut it, you're only gonna have rights, okay? Because you would take this piece and put it here, but if you fan fold, then you have opposites, okay? Uh, shape number uh, 15 in our cube. This is the kite shape. I want to tell you that this is one of the best, best stash busting tools ever. How many of you in your stash have charm squares that you thought you couldn't live without? This is the ultimate stash busting tool. So get all those charm squares, cut them all up, and then get solid to do your half rectangles. Here's my tip. When you're sewing the half rectangles to either the isosceles triangle or the kite, you wanna start from the fat end and sew to the skinny end, press your seams open, okay? All right, and the last shape, because Christina said, gosh, I hope there is a trapezoid. Okay, here's the trapezoid. Again, you're going to add shape number three from the original cube and that workhorse to make a square. So those are all of the shapes in the cubes, the companion set corners and the companion set angles. They're 25% off today. All right, now I'm going to show you a little trunk show before I show you what's new at AccuQuilt. Are you excited? Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is um, one of my favorite quilts. I traveled to Canada quite a bit, and this is my um, bear's paw. Look at how fun this is. Okay, so this one, we actually used our cube and our companion set corners, because right here in the bear's paw, this is a chisel shape. Instead of doing a square and two half square triangles, we eliminated that seam, and now it has chisels. Okay, so this is Bear's Paw. These are all free patterns available at AccuQuilt.com. Oh, yes, have I messed up my mic? Oh, when I cover it with a quilt, apparently you can't hear me. Okay, technology. Can't live with it, can't live without it. Okay, here we go. My okay, my husband got a new phone over the weekend. Uh, I have just three words, for the love. I tell you, he is the smartest man I know, and it took him forever to get his new phone set up. Christina, did you get yours set up? Okay, yeah, kind of. Okay, this is our cube companion, our cube and our companion set corners. Okay, again, we have that chisel shape. This is what makes that rickrack look, right? And then we've added um, some embroidery to the center of that. Okay, I'll talk about embroidery in just a second, okay? It's called Rick Rack Flower Garden. Okay, um, one of my very favorite, all-time favorite dyes that we have at AccuQuilt is Storm at Sea. Storm at Sea was my bucket list quilt, and I never cut it because I didn't want to cut all the 57,000 pieces, all right? But now there's a die for that, okay? And this is the quilt it makes. You ready? Ta-da! So you can make it uh, two colors, you can make it a variation of colors, you can make it three. You can actually do amazing things with Storm Etsy, okay? 
All right. And here's our last one. This is from our good friend Kay England. Um, she is a great friend of AccuQuilt. You should follow her on Facebook. She has llamas. It's true, <laughs> llamas. When I was, she lives in Indiana, and when I was in Indiana last time, I was going to go see her, but the weather got bad and I couldn't. I got delayed. I was going to go hang out with the llamas, okay? So King England designed this pattern for us. It's called Starry Path. Look at this. Okay. Ta-da. Oh, can I do it? Oh, here, let's do it overhead, and then I can talk about it. Thank you. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Okay. So look. Here, I'm going to get you a good get you a good view. Okay, so this block, let's talk about it. So we use the cube and the companion set angles. So here's triangle and a square. Here's that trapezoid, Christina's favorite shape. Okay, here's those little half square triangles, shape number five. And it makes these beautiful stars. It's called Starry Path. Now, when you look at this, you don't think that it's a Christmas quilt, but actually, look, it has Christmas fabric in it. I love it. It's called Starry Path, okay? I keep threatening that when we retire it, it's just going to live at my house. But until then, it has a great label that says property of AccuQuilt. Okay, let's talk about what's new. All right, so now you know about our cutters. Don't forget, 25% off all the stuff, AccuQuilt. Don't forget, be so in. They're going to let you do curbside pickup, right? Okay, and the prices are good until when, Christina? Midnight tomorrow, okay? We don't know what day it is today, but tomorrow midnight, right? We were trying to figure that out this morning. Okay, so at AccuQuilt, we have lots of new things. I'm going to show you four new dies, but I'm going to show you the next one. This is my all-time, hands-down, favorite die that AccuQuilt has ever made, okay? And it makes this. It is called Morning Star. Look at this. Isn't that stunning? I love it, okay? So I actually made this particular quilt. Um, oh, see, look, my pile's getting so good. Doesn't this look more and more like your sewing room? Yeah, okay. Um, I made this in black and white. I used grunge and made two color, but you can make three color or multicolor. We have a ton of free patterns online at accuquilt.com that you can download. But if you're thinking of a dye today and you're thinking, gosh, what dye should I splurge on today? Get my favorite, Morning Star, okay? It comes on a six by 24 dye mat. Um, speaking of that Morning Star, Catherine was asking if there was going to be a demo of the bob dyes today. Could you maybe explain a little bit more about kind of how a bob dye works? Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, so Christina, Christina's gonna help me. Um, okay, right there in the suitcase. Yep, lift up, keep lifting, keep lifting until you come to the morning star die, right there, perfect. It just so happens yesterday I taught this class, so I'm gonna show you. Okay, so who asked the question? Catherine. Catherine, thank you for asking. Okay, so this is my morning star block. Isn't it fun? Okay, Catherine asked a question. So at AccuQuilt, we have kind of two different little theories of thought. We have the cube system, which are eight dies or the companion sets, that make 216 patterns. So you can convert patterns, you can create your own patterns. But let's say you just wanna have a die that has all the pieces on it. In the AccuQuilt world, we call that a bob or a block on board. So this is the Morning Star die. It has all the pieces you need to make one block on the die board, okay? So it has screen printed letters so that you know which shape is which. Now, on this particular one, in order to make the block, you need three um, layers of white and three layers of black. How many layers can you cut, quilters? Six, okay? So I've just taken my fabric right here, okay? I've just subcut it, measured from edge to edge, added a quarter of an inch, and then I could just go through and cut six layers, okay? Now, you need six layers of A, but you only need four of B. So are you going to put six layers down when you cut it? Just cut, put four, okay? So this is a sample of a bob die, and now you've seen all the shapes in the cube. I'm going to tell you, no, you cannot make this with 
shapes from the cube, okay? Um, we try to allow for some different um, blocks when we use our bobs. So we have lots of bobs, like Storm at Sea is a bob die. Um, Log Cabin is a bob die. If you go to YouTube and put in the search engine AccuQuilt Storm at Sea or AccuQuilt Morning Star, you can watch some great um, demos on it, okay? Thanks for the question, Catherine. Okay, last three things because I got like six minutes. Yeah, we're good. Christina says we're good. Okay, so um, we have three new dies that we released right before quarantine, um, and they are all applique dies. They are limited edition. See the teal tray? That means they're only here for a short time. Now, remember I told you strips were the exception to the lengthwise grain rule? The other exception, applique shapes, okay? So here's the deal. When you're taking your fabric, you're going to pre-fuse your fabric. You have to count the fusible as a half a layer of fabric, okay? So you can put four layers of pre-fused fabric and cut all of your shapes. Now at AccuQuilt, it, we have what we call free embroidery downloads. As of December 1st, 2019, all of our non-licensed Applique shapes have a free embroidery download. You get your choice of three stitches, a blanket stitch, a satin stitch, and a motif stitch. To access them, access them all you have to do is go to AccuQuilt.com, find, this is called the nautical medley die, open it up and there's a little button that says free embroidery download. You're gonna click on it, you're gonna choose the sailboat, you're going to choose the stitch. Let's say you want to do the blanket stitch. And then you're going to choose the file for your embroidery machine. You're going to drag it to a flash drive, take it to your embroidery machine, uh, put your fabric in a hoop with stabilizer. And then what it's going to do is it's going to stitch out a placement stitch of the sailboat. And since you've cut all of your pieces with our go dies, they come together perfectly. Okay? So here's a sample of our little um, sailboat that we made. And this is the blanket stitch. And then here's a little project that I made, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. I don't know what day it is, so I can't tell you, okay? Um, I used our cube system, look, there's those flying geese. Look how perfect those come together. And then I used some of the shapes from the nautical medley, okay? Then here is another one. We used our 12 inch cube and our nautical medley die. Look how fun that is, okay? So think about using your cube system, adding applique to it. Storm at sea, we have a great um, sea life medley die that would look great with it. All right, the next um, uh, new die that we released is also a limited edition. It's called a Western medley, okay? These are all available at Bisa Win. okay? Now, it has a boot. There's a snake in my boot, okay? I love Toy Story. That, only that one though. All the others, not my favorite. Um, we added a little star for its little um, spur. It has a horseshoe. Make sure you always have your horseshoes like this. If you turn them upside down, all the luck runs out. And then here's our horse. Look how fun this is. Okay, quilters, are you ready? It's my favorite thing. For $5 you can purchase an embroidery file that has a unicorn, okay? So it's gonna turn the horse into a unicorn. So save your coffee money and get you a unicorn download, okay? And here's a sample of our Western Medley. Look how fun the back is. It looks like bandanas, okay? And here we go. So see how we had our little boots with our little stars? Our horseshoes are facing up so the luck doesn't run out. And we use our cube to make these sawtooth blocks. All right, the last new die that we have is this die. This is the camper die. Look how cute this is, okay? And you're thinking, gosh, I wish there was something to pull the camper. The answer is there is. It's called the cute car, okay? So again, it has a free embroidery file for both of them. Here's a really fun project that we made um, using the Northwoods medley die. So it's like the uh, cute car is playing the camper in the woods. It has the, uh, the moose, not the cow. It has the moose, 
and the trees and the bear. And then finally, this is our last fun project that we made using our camper die. Okay, wonder always, right? Wonder often, wander always. Wander often, wonder always. I'll get it right. And we used our two inch alphabet. Again, has a free embroidery download. Hey, so that's what's new. Okay, quilters, be so in. Go to their favorite Be So In location or go to BeSoIn.com. 20% off dies, mats, cutters, cubes. 25. Did I just say 20? I'm giving you an extra five. 25% <laughs> off dies, mats, cubes, and cutters. Give them a holler. Shop local. Thanks for letting Christina and Chelsea and I take over Facebook Live. I'm Pam Heller from AccuQuilt. Reminding you that at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quote more.